everyone fairly joined the White House in the unfair rush to judgment. So now what? Our lead panel tonight knows the risks of mis mixing race and politics and knows a bit about how a White House handles crises. Here with me is California Congresswoman Barbara Lee. She's the chairwoman of the Congressional Black Caucus, whose members just met with the Agriculture Secretary, Mr. Vilsack. In New Orleans, CNN contributors James Carville and Mary Madeline. And in San Francisco, the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Congresswoman, let me start with you because you just had this meeting with Secretary Vilsack. He is saying, this was my decision, this is my responsibility. But we do know, as early as Monday, they alerted the White House about this video. They thought they might have a problem. Do you want and do you think the American people deserve to know the back and forth between the Agriculture Department and the White House? Who at the White House was aware of this? What did they say back to the Department? Do we deserve to know that? Clearly, the American people deserve to know. Uh, this is a White House that uh, really is a transparent White House, an administration that is transparent. The Congressional Black Caucus uh, met with the Secretary uh, just uh, a few minutes ago. It was a very candid, very open meeting. He apologized. Uh, when one makes a mistake, we expect an apology. Also, uh, we talked about Ms. Sherrod's life, her experiences, and the sensitivity that she brings to the Department of Agriculture, which has been uh, really a department that hasn't lived up to Could he promise. explain to you why they got so hypersensitive about race and the worry about how this would play politically that they acted without having the common decency of A, making sure they read the speech in its entirety, and B, asking her at his level what happened? The secretary admitted that he did not have the facts, that he acted hastily, that he should have taken time to review the entire video, that he should not have had uh, as such a, made such a decision in a rush to judgment just as he did and he was very humble in his apology I must say and we asked uh, early on uh, today that he uh, actually offer Ms. Sherrard uh, her position back and we told him that that was just unacceptable and in fact we have got to have this national conversation about race the Congressional Black Caucus continues to say that this is not a post-racial era we have to raise this to the level of uh, the, the country in terms of trying to find a healthy way to talk about race and all of the problems that we still have. We've come a long way, but we have a long way to go. And, and James and Mary, you have both helped presidents deal with crises. I want your take on how much you think the rush to judgment here was impacted by this story, at least if you believe the conservative blog posting was a toxic mix of race and politics. Well, I, you know, yeah, look, obviously it was. And it was, a, they, they messed up. And I mean, the Secretary of Coach, I mean, what do I do? Flog him? He said he made a terrible mistake. He may in judgment. He's moving at a corrected. I, I, I don't know exactly what more a man can do. And okay. Maybe we ought to, you know, tie him up and flog him or something like that. But, but uh, he, he, they made a big error. And yeah, you're right. And it did have to do with the toxic. But the reason they did it is because this clown filmmaker sent out an edited, uh, an edited tape. If I was, if I was, I was Mr. Shroud, I'd sue him. The, re I mean, the reason they hate that the fault of it. The reason they keep repeating the same mistake and they don't take advantage of their teaching moments is because of the presumption of race and that Republicans and conservatives are racist. A year ago today or tomorrow, the president said the Cambridge cops were stupid. The tea bag people, the tea party people, see, I can't even, they've called them that so, so much. <laughs> see what I mean? <laughs> they presume and they accuse conservatives of racism and they rush to judgment and they manufacture <laughs> and flakely lie about conservatives of all stripes on radio, off the air, I'm, and they have this elitist, I'm sorry. despicable I'm sorry. I'm sorry. attitude, and then they want to have a national dialogue. I'm not having this conversation with him, John. I'm sorry. They want to have a conversation. I'm sorry, but the person that edited, the dishonest person in this was the filmmaker. Well, that is that is one factor of this, without a doubt. Reverend Jackson, I want you to join the conversation. As you can see, once you start one of these conversations, you get into a crackling debate. There's a lot of politics involved. But why, why, and I guess, should were we wrong to expect it might be different with the first African-American president, that when they are dealing with an issue like this, that they would have the sensitivity from their own history, perhaps, and their own statements to say, Mr. Secretary, take a deep breath. It doesn't matter what some right-wing organization is saying. Let's check this out before we act. Well, Reese remains a hypersensitive conversation. Whether it is London with Neil driven out of Washington before she had the chance to have a hearing of Van Jones, just the magic of it all. It seems to me the hit case where the bloggers and cable networks have a lower standard for putting stuff on the air. There's a reaction to that, an overreaction to that. And she was not afforded due process. 
Uh, and that becomes should, one, one of the teachable moments. I hope that uh, two things. One, since this is a, uh, a good news in it, that the Spooner family, the White family, and the Shiraz will be invited to the White House, much like Crowley and Gates were, because they represent something wholesome. This is really a, a good news ending of a tragic situation. And last, I think Barbara's right. It's not just need for a racial conversation, but to close real racial gaps. I mean, 9% uh, unemployment for the nation, around 27% for blacks, uh, for example, with number one in infant mortality, number one in short life expectancy, number one in reverse home foreclosures. The, the, the race gap in the structure sense, in fact, are getting wider. Uh, Congresswoman, do you believe this is case closed, or as we discussed earlier, do you have more questions about how this was handled? Just to make sure, Secretary Vilsack seems to have gotten the message. I've known him for a long time. He seems very contrite and very humbled, but we still don't know, and they will not share with us what his deputy said. Ms. Sherrod, for example, says she was told repeatedly the White House wanted her to resign as quickly as possible. Now, people in this town sometimes exaggerate. We, we should be clear. A lot of people say the White House told me when it might have been somebody else. But do you need to see a public accounting, the documentation of the back and forth in the conversations before you can say, case closed? We're not saying case closed. We're going to say uh, the facts uh, will definitely, as they have to now, speak for themselves. But I think what's important is that, one, the secretary apologized to the Ms. Sherrard. Uh, her life now is really a life that should serve in a, as an example. I mean, when you look at the struggles that she has been through, her transformation, and how now the, the story of redemption and how this wonderful woman, like many African Americans who have been discriminated against, have turned their lives into something that really is a life of making America better. And that's the story. Uh, she's a hero, if you ask me. And I think what Reverend Jackson said about this moment, we have to look at the fact that there are economic inequalities, racial inequalities in our country. When you have us working now on a jobs bill, trying to get young people jobs for the stuff, we can't even get a jobs bill passed. When you look at the huge gaps in unemployment, health disparities, when you look at the fact that our communities are polluted, when you look at the huge inequalities and inequities, in this country, there still remains much business that has to be talked about. It has to be swept out from under the rug, and we need to deal with it. Reverend, I'm going to ask you, hold on just one second. I see we're jump in. Our whole panel is going to stay right here. One, one second, sir. We'll get you on the other side. We've got to take a quick break. As many are saying, including the White House, this is the teachable moment. Who needs to be taught and what when we come back?